Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're doing negative numbers. Now negative numbers is a very important topic in maths, particularly for algebra. If you want to cope with your algebra later on, there are three key topics you need to master. The first is fractions, the second one is indices or powers, and the third one is negative numbers. It comes up over and over again in algebra and a lot of the time when people struggle with algebra <clears throat> is because they're struggling with their negative numbers. So if you can master your negative numbers the algebra will be much easier. Now there are essentially four things you can do with negative numbers. As per usual it's add, subtract, multiply and divide. So we're going to cover all of those. But the first thing we're going to need is a number line. So I'll draw one of those quickly. Okay, great. So there's our number line. You can think of it a bit like a thermometer if you want to. So you have increasing temperatures going up and if it gets cold enough it gets down to zero degrees or freezing if you're working in Celsius. And then you go into the negative numbers. So just the key thing to be aware of here is that as the temperature keeps going down the number goes up. So minus one is the first degree below zero and then it's minus two, minus three, minus four, etc. So the numbers increase going up and they're decreasing going down. So we'll start with adding and subtracting and the concepts are very straightforward. You can just think about temperatures going up and down on a thermometer. So let's pick an example. If we try 3 minus 5, what well that means is you're starting off at 3 degrees let's say and then you're going to go down by 5. So imagine that the temperature outside, in fact when I took my son to school this morning the car told us the temperature was 3 degrees outside, 3 degrees Celsius. So imagine now that overnight the temperature goes down by 5 degrees and we want to know how cold will it then be. Well if you start off at 3 and you go down by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you end up at minus 2. So 3 minus 5 is minus 2. And essentially with adding and subtracting that's all you're doing with negative numbers. You're just going up and down on a number line. Let me do another example. We start off at minus 6 this time and then we'll add 2 to it. So again go straight to your number line, minus 6 is all the way down here, add 2, so you're going up by 2, 1, 2, you get to minus 4. So minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. So pretty easy really. I'll do one more example like this, minus 3 plus 7. So start off at minus 3, that's here. You're going up again this time because you're adding by 7. So from minus 3 we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You end up at 4. So minus 3 plus 7 is 4. If the temperature outside were minus 3 degrees and it went up by 7 degrees, the temperature would then be 4 degrees. Yeah, from minus 3 up by 7 takes you to 4. One thing that, two people, that people do wonder about sometimes is um, whether or not you should count the zero you do count zero. Zero is a number two. Yep. If the temperature is one degree and it goes down by one then the temperature is now zero degrees. If it goes down by another one it's minus one. So you count the zero counting both ways. All right. so that's adding or subtracting numbers that might end up being negative at certain points. But there's another way you can add and subtract with negative numbers and that's actually adding a negative number. So let me try and give you an example to help with that one. Uh, imagine that I've got six pounds in my bank account. So I'm doing fairly well at the moment. I'm in the black. I've actually got some money. My wife, on the other hand, she's not doing quite so well as me. She's overdrawn by five pounds. So I've got six pounds in my bank account. She's got minus five pounds in her bank account, if you like. Now, if we were to find out how much money we had in the world by combining the total amounts of money that we each have. That's the same as saying, well, let's add them. What's six plus minus five? Well, if I've got six pounds and she's overdrawn by five pounds, hopefully you can see here that her minus five pounds is going to wipe out five of my pounds and it's going to leave us with only one pound. So that's how you add with negative numbers. Yep. You're adding a negative number on here. And the result is that if I started with 6, I actually end up with less than I started with. Which sounds a bit strange. How can you add something and end up with less? Well, the reason is because my wife's overdrawn. 
her five pounds are taking away from my six. When you combine it, when you add it, when you combine them together, you do end up with less because she's got a negative amount. So if you're adding, adding negative numbers, then it just goes down. And in fact, this is the same thing as simply subtracting them. Six minus five gives you one. You could write that as six minus positive five if you want to. And what you might notice here is that if you've got a minus and a plus, whether that, that way around or that way around, they actually just make a subtraction. Six plus minus five just becomes six minus five. Effectively, the two signs, if we go back to what we started with, we had six plus minus five. If you ever end up with two signs next to each other with nothing in between, you can combine them. And those two signs will become a minus sign. So six plus minus five is the same thing as six minus five. You just get one either way. That's so important that um, I'm going to write it over here. This is going to be our, one of our key rules for negative numbers. If you have two different signs which are next to each other with nothing in between, then you can combine them together and they always become a minus sign. Whether it's adding a minus five or if you're subtracting positive five, it doesn't really make any difference. Yeah? If you subtract positive five from six, you get one. If you add a negative five, you're still going to get one. They both, either way around, are going to combine to give you a minus sign. And that always works. So, that's adding negative numbers. Let me just do one example to show you how that works. So if we have four, and this time I'm going to add minus seven to it. So again, the two signs here will combine. So the plus and the minus, because they're different, one's positive, one's negative, different signs, they're going to become a minus sign. So four plus minus seven is the same thing as four minus seven. Go to your number line, start off at four, and we're going to go down by seven because you're subtracting. So from here, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be minus three. So four plus minus seven is the same thing as four minus seven, and that gives you minus three. So that's how you add negative numbers. One general point that I should mention here, if we just go back, is that signs generally attach themselves to the thing on the right. So you should see that sign as belonging with the seven. So that goes with that, and this is being added to the four. We'll talk a bit more about that a bit later, but try and think of signs as attaching to the thing on the right. In general, every number, everything you write down in maths, always has a sign. It's either a plus or it's a minus. So this three is a minus three because there's a minus in front of it. That minus attaches to the three. This seven is a minus seven because it attaches, this minus sign attaches to it. The only time you don't write the sign in front of it is if it's a positive number and it happens to be the first thing. This is a positive four. We could write the plus there to make it a positive four, but we generally don't bother. But it is still there. There's like an imaginary plus sign in front of the four. We just assume it's positive if you just write the number down. So bear that in mind. We'll come back to that in a bit. All right, so that was adding negative numbers. You can also subtract negative numbers. So let's go back to our banking example. Imagine this time that I've got two pounds in my bank account, so I'm not doing quite as well this month. My wife, though, her fortunes are improving, and she's managed to pull up her minus four pounds, sorry, her minus five pounds into minus four pounds. So she's now only four pounds overdrawn. That's good. So what we're going to do this time, though, is not combine our total amount of money. I want to find out how much more money I have than she has. So we're going to subtract them. I'm going to find the difference between my two pounds and her minus four pounds. I should say in practice, my wife always has more money than me. I'm just uh, creating this little fiction to make me feel better. So it's two minus minus four. It's the difference between two pounds and minus four pounds. Well, two pounds is here and minus four pounds is here. 
And the difference between those two amounts of money is one, two, three, four, five, six pounds. I've got six pounds more than she does. So two minus minus four is actually six. Yeah, two is six more than minus four. The difference between two and minus four is six. Now again, that might seem a bit odd. If you're subtracting and you started with two, how can you end up with more? Well, if you think about it, if we start here with the two and the minus four, to find the difference between any two amounts of money, if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, if we're subtracting a negative amount, then I've got two pounds here to get me down to zero, and then the four that were negative. So I've got the four negative amount and the two positive amount. And to find the total, you're having to add those two together. So two minus minus four, the difference between that point and that point is actually six, because it's the two I get from there plus the four I get from there. So two plus four gives you six. And again, you can see here that we could just combine these two signs. If you're subtracting a negative number, that's actually the same thing as simply adding. Two plus four is six. And again, that always works. And it's so important, we need another rule for that one. So if the signs are different, you get a negative number. But if you've got same signs, that always gives you a positive number. So when we had two minus minus four, these two combine because they're next to each other with nothing in between and they become a plus sign. Two plus four is six. So it feels a bit weird, but it's really easy to do in practice. Let's do another example. So we'll have minus one, minus, minus three. A lot of minus signs there. But it's all right, it's very easy to work out. I've got two minuses here. These are the same sign. There's nothing in between, so I can combine them using my rule. Same signs gives me a plus. So these two become a plus. Now, don't be tempted to do anything with that one. That sign is not next to another sign. There's a one between these two, for example, so I can't mix it up with these ones. This minus sign attaches to the one. So remember, signs in maths always attach to the thing on the right. So that minus goes with the one, and it becomes minus one plus these two signs are the same. They combine into a plus. So it's minus one plus three. So if we start off at minus one, we go up by three. One, two, three, we end up at two. So minus one minus minus three is actually two because it's minus one plus three. So that's adding and subtracting. So again, just to reiterate one of the key points here, you can end up with a lot of different signs kicking around sometimes. If you ever see two next to each other with nothing in between, then you can combine them using this rule. However, if it's separated by a number, you can't do anything with it. And signs always attach to the thing on the right. So that's gonna become a minus sign, which will then attach to the five. Okay, so it's minus two, minus five, and then you just go down on your number line and you work it out. All right, so that was adding and subtracting. Now we're gonna do multiplying and dividing. And the good news is, is this is actually much easier than adding and subtracting. So, uh, yeah, let's pick an example to start with. So six times minus eight. Now the way you do multiplying and dividing is you just ignore all the signs completely. Just pretend that minus sign isn't even there. So it's six times eight. Well, six eights are 48. And then we go back to our rule. If the two signs here are the same, then the answer will be positive. But if these two signs are different, then the answer will be negative. Now, what two signs are you talking about here? There's a minus sign here, but there is no other sign here. Do you mean the time sign? No, definitely not the time sign. When we say signs, I'm always talking about positive or negative signs. And remember, everything in maths has a sign. This minus sign attaches to the eight. This is positive. We don't write the plus sign in, 
if you write 6 down, we just assume you're talking about positive 6. But there is a plus sign here. There's a kind of imaginary plus sign that sits in front of the 6. So that is a positive 6. And the signs here, positive and negative, are different. So the answer has got to be negative. And you just have a minus sign in front of it to indicate that it's negative. That minus sign attaches to the 48. So positive 6 times negative 8 gives you minus 48. All right, let's do another example. Uh, we'll have division this time. So minus 12 divided by minus 3. So again, just ignore all the signs. Whether you're multiplying or dividing, you ignore all the signs and do the calculation. 12 divided by 3, that's 4. Then look at the signs. <coughs> I've got two minus signs. Yet the 12 is negative, and so is the 3. The signs are the same. So this time, same signs, the answer is going to be positive. I could write a plus here if I wanted to, but I don't need to. It's assumed if I just write 4 that it's a positive 4. So my answer is just 4. OK, let's do a couple more. So we'll have minus 16 divided by 2. So again, ignore all the signs. Don't worry about that. 16 divided by 2 is... 8. Then go to your rule. Are the signs the same or are they different? Well, this is negative, and this one, there's no sign in front of it, but it's positive. We assume it's positive if there's no sign in front of it. So minus 16 divided by positive 2, signs are different, that means the answer needs to be negative. So you then just put a minus sign in front of the 8. So minus 16 divided by positive 2 is minus 8. Okay, last example. We have minus 5 times by minus 4, let's do. So ignore all the signs, 5 times 4 is 20. The signs this time are the same, so the answer is positive. I can write a plus sign if I want to, but I don't really need to. So minus 4 times minus 5 is positive 20. So that's it. That's adding and subtracting. As long as you can add and subtract, sorry, that's not adding and subtracting, that's multiplying and dividing. As long as you can multiply and divide with normal numbers, doing it with negative numbers is really easy, as long as you can remember this rule. So this is our rule for all negative numbers, whether you're adding, subtracting, or multiplying and dividing, this is what you need to remember. But, there's, very one, uh, there's one very important but here. Although this rule works for adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing, it works in a very different way for each case. So if you're adding and subtracting, if we've got 5 plus minus 7 or something, this rule tells you how to combine two signs that are next to each other with nothing in between. So in this case, they would become a minus sign. You do 5 minus 7, start off at 5, go down by 7, you're going to get down to minus 2. So that's how you use the rule when adding and subtracting. When multiplying and dividing, if we've got... 3 times minus 4. Here again I've got a positive and a negative. So there's different signs, it's going to be negative. But that tells you the sign of the answer. It doesn't tell you how to combine them. So 3, 4 is a 12. Different signs gives you a minus. Now the thing a lot of people get wrong here is they try and use this rule when they're adding and subtracting to work out the sign of the answer. And it doesn't tell you that. For adding and subtracting, this rule tells you nothing about the sign of the answer. Sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. It just depends. When you're adding and subtracting, use the rule to combine signs and then go to your number line. Up and down on the number line. If you end up at a positive number, this will be positive. If you end up like here at a negative number, then this will be negative. It's only when you're multiplying or dividing that this rule tells you the sign of the answer. And because of that, multiplying and dividing tends to be quite a bit easier than adding and subtracting. So hopefully you've got all that straight in your head. That's the only thing you really need to remember for negative numbers. But it's very important you master this topic before you try and tackle algebra. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.